Hi, I'm Julian. Um, I'm talking about regular expression um, and basically how to implement them in JavaScript. So this is what I did. Um, I did a lot of projects like PDF.js, where you render PDFs in, in Firefox, or developer tools, Hack Gecko, um, member OpenStreetMap data in the browser. But this is like my first real side project that I pushed to some kind of end. So pretty happy to present this. So some word of motivation why I did this is was like, yeah, you, you know, this like regular expressions. They are so small. They're so cute. But how many of you really find it painful to write them and it takes hours for you to write them? Yeah, many hands in the air. So this was like me. So like, yeah, they look cute. They are nice, but they're, they're, they're really hard to get right. So many people ask me, so why am I doing re-implementing this in JavaScript? Um, well, the reason was I wanted to be able to debug regular expressions. I want to write my own shit compiler in, regular, in, in JavaScript that basically compiles regular expressions from JavaScript to JavaScript code again. I want to present at JSConf EU. So it was like, yeah, my talk got accepted. So I was, yoo -hoo! And then actually, well, now that means I got to get this working. So <laughs> that was the hard part. But let's give a demo. So this is what, uh, this is JFira, GitHub, IO, RegEx, JS, if you want to try it out. So what we can do in the console is, you know, normally you would do just uh, new regex AB. Then you would do regular expression execute foo AB. You get something back. And now what you can do, uh, do the same thing, just with the JavaScript implementation. Phew. So that works. But what's cooler is, um, the debugger part. So here you can write your uh, regular expression and you basically have some input and you see what matches. So here you see what happens. So at the top it's, it looks at A and B. Then it tries to match A, but that doesn't work because it's B. So it goes back. Then it matches B and yeah, that's successful. So that's pretty cool. So let's try something more complex. Uh, you see, yeah, that's, that's not really a regex. So let's try a little bit more. Cool thing is, once you implement the regular expressions, you are pretty good at writing them, um, it turns out. So it's like this. And now we can do hello. And you see it matches in real while. Oh, that's a little bit too long. So, like, so this is now what happens. It's like it tries to you know, repeat this A a few times. So it matches a W, which means the character. It matches. They tries the next time and like ah the, the colon doesn't work so it does backtrace. Now the colon works. It tries to match multiple um, spaces. So another space. No, oh, no, that's not a space anymore. So I got to backtrack. Okay, now repeat the W. Yeah, that's a word. Oh, there's nothing else. But yeah, I'm already done. So that's it. Um, what you also get is you get the results of your matches. So you see the A and B are in the groups. You can share this to your friends. So if they come along, oh, this is not matching, you can fix it and give them the link again. So it's basically just putting this in the hash here, pretty old school. And you also get a parse tree for basically the, the regular expression they write up here. So that's pretty cool. So let's see how this works. Um, so this is like an overview of what I'm going to talk about. Um, so basically, I'm going to tell you a little bit how the parse tree is built. Uh, how the internal node list works, which is basically what the matcher uses then to really go over the string and, and see whether it matches or not. Um, then about how the regular expression regex object itself, um, a few things about that, and then writing the JIT and some conclusion stuff. So let's talk about the parse tree. Um, uh, the parse tree basically in computer science means that if you have some string, you give some rep um, structured representation of that string. And that structure is described by uh, grammar rules. In a high level, what we want to achieve is we have regex that we put in, we have a parser, and it generates the parse tree. So let's take a look at an example. So here we have this expression where you have a group, and then inside you have A, B, or C. And if we build a parse tree for this, this looks like this. So at the top we have group, then we have disjunction because we have I, A, B, or C. Then we have an uh, alternative that means there can be multiple things following each other. And then we have the character A and character B. And as I said, A, B, or C. So we have the C on the other side. So this is what a parse tree looks like. Um, 
The parser that I wrote, um, it's completely handwritten. Um, I took a, a computer science class on compilers, and there we used a generator. And I was, I'm still young, so I thought, well, now I'll write one on my own, and it got a bit painful, but you're going to see. Um, there's only basic error handling, which could be improved. Um, the thing is that it uses regular expressions itself, so it's kind of cheating that you write your regular expression parser for JavaScript, which uses the regular expressions from JavaScript again. Um, but I hope I can um, just replace them with um, checked or off or compile my, my own thing to a JavaScript function and use it there. Um, but th what I also try to do is for the parse tree that it emits that to contain useful information. So for example, if you have a regular expression like a, B, or a group, and then basically a back reference, it's not obvious that that slash one means it, it is a reference. For example, if you would have a slash two, there would not be such a group, and you need to figure out what to do. And the parser already says, OK, the type is a reference, so it's really a reference, and it's reference group, not one. And you also got the from two, that means where are the characters starting and ending, and you got this raw string, which basically means, OK, this, this part of parse three is this backslash one. OK, so now implementing the parser was kind of fun, because this is like the official grammar from the ECMA spec. So I tried to follow the spec. So this is where it starts, where it continues, a little bit more, and this is the final end. So it took me a little bit long to implement this. Um, but yeah, it's, it's pretty working now. Um, these are actually just the grammar rules for character classes. And it was a blog post complaining the, the regular expression um, grammar is so horrible. And it turns out that it got to be that, like that way for this reason. Um, for example, if you have uh, a regular expression where you have just a character range A and a minus, that's a actually interpreted as you either match an A or a minus. So if you execute it against a minus sign, that, that actually results in something. Whereas if you have A minus B and you execute it against just a minus sign, that doesn't match because it really means the ranges of characters between A and B. Um, but so you, you see you need to keep some kind of track or state whether you have A minus and something following or you have A minus and actually a character following. But we have a context-free grammar here, so there's no real way to encode a state. And the only way to encode a state is to have more grammar rules, and that's why this blows up such horrible lot. Um, some notes on the parser, so um, I think looking back, I might should have used the parser generator, which would have made way more errors um, or better error messages and also helped me to, um, yeah, to, to just write it um, easily. Um, I try to really follow the spec as close as possible, but there are some things that are not in the specs. For example, for um, the JavaScript engine, the regular expression down there, which is the closing brackets, is valid, whereas there's no such rule in the grammar. Um, and parsing numbers is pretty interesting. Um, so <coughs> this is in the parse decimal expression. So as I already said, if you have like two groups and you have them as slash two, that means a reference for sure. But what if you have a number that's not a reference? Um, so actually, it turns out if it's an octal number, you got to interpret this like uh, you got to do, yeah, get an octal number and then use a string character off to represent what character that should match against. If it's not an octal number, uh, you just interpret the number basically without a backslash. But at least in V8, uh, SpiderMonkey does th something different. It was took me some hours to get these small details right, but um, it's now passing all the tests. Okay, so now that we have the parse tree, um, we're looking at the node list, which is basically the thing that Matcher uses to execute against the regular expression. Um, so we convert the parse tree to a node list and stay the structure for the Matcher. So a simple example is if you have a regex A and B, this looks like maybe you have a, a node of a type char character with a data A, then you have one of um, data B, and then basically you, you're done. So that's it. A little bit more complicated example is like this. Uh, if you have like a grouping which repeats multiple times and then followed by a C, um, that's internally represented by you have a repeat block which has a certain ID and you specify how, how much or how less you want to match. 
So it starts minimum zero times and unfinished many times it once. So then you have uh, a new node basically saying this should be um, the begin group, such as, okay, here I start and it's the first index. Then you have an alternative because you have A, B, or C again. So you have the character A, B, and character C. Then you have a join point. And then you have an end group, such that you can say, okay, when I come pass along here, I enter this group, so this is the sub, sub match that I should track. Um, then you go to the repeat again, and then I we could go over there, or if you follow the C, and then you're done. And this is uh, the, the thing in brackets is now basically the A, B, or C that we've seen before. And you see that from the parse tree to this representation, it f from at least for me, it's way more uh, obvious how maybe the match are going to work around is um, and not like in this tree structure. Okay, so <coughs> um, the node list, they look pretty complicated to build, um, but actually it's it's easy to do if you do some kind of walking over path tree, which is pretty common for compiler techniques, and then you just uh, bind one node after the other. Um, so one, one side story for node list, so there is this backslash s, which basically uh, matches white space all line terminators. And if you look up the white spaces, um, it, it says basically what you, what you should match. So like tabs, vertical tabs, and then the last point, any other Unicode space separator. <laughs> so, huh, yeah, that's, that's hard to get right, right? But the cool thing is there's a Spremer, and people already did a job there. So I just copied the function from there, and that's how I got lucky. Um, and that's also the reason why I basically licensed uh, RegEx as RegEx JS as BSD um, to be compatible with S Primer and also that maybe there can be some code exchange. Good. So next, I want to talk about the matcher. So the matcher is really the thing that basically takes the regular expression representation and the input string and tells you what parts matches and um, or if not. Um, the way it works is basically you pass in two arguments. So you have something like a state, which is your string, and where in the string are you, what are your matches, and also the traces that you recorded, and the note list that we saw you before. Um, it tries to do all kind of possible matches till it, it, til it finds one, or it says, well, there's no other way, uh, way. And the way of this, I try something, and I, if it fails, I just backtrack, is done by um, calling the matcher recursively. Um, and if, if the trace fails, so if it tries to do something, it says, well, I cannot continue here, the function just returns, and the outer function tries something else. So here's an example how does it work. Um, we start with a state, which is basically our input string ABC. And now we try to match that against this regular expression. So over there, we have like our input string, and down there is like this node uh, list representation that I built before. Um, <coughs> and now, what it does is it looks at the first character, so that's A, that, that looks good. So it moves to the next one. And now it has the option either to match B or C. So it chooses, okay, I choose the first one. And before it goes into there, it makes a clone of the current state. So we're talking about S prime now. Um, so we said test B, yep, that's good. So we move to D. We test D, yep, that works. Basically, we're end of file, so we are done. So if that doesn't work because you know the first option is not working, um, it looks like this. So we have the same thing again. We uh, come here. We try to match B. And we clone this, but actually this time it doesn't work because we have a C at that position. So what we do, we do backtracking. Um, so we jump out the function. Um, <coughs> we try to match C this time uh, with another. So this is also another clone state as double prime. We try to match, uh, okay, now my slides are not in right also. So we do, we test whether the C uh, works against that thing, it does. Um, we try D, that works, and we are done again. Okay. Um, and while we're doing this, we are also recording this trace information that's basically used for the debugger that you saw before. That you can see where is do backtracking and what part is matching. Um, there are some pitfalls if you implement this matcher. So one thing that I came across is um, basically if you, if you have a loop and you go back, 
um, you get to reset all the matches that you did before. So example, um, the, the group B, if you loop the, the outer A, B, C once more, you got to reset the, the inner group for B. Okay, that's, that's somewhat what the uh, spec says, but you also need to reset the counter for the B. So there was a bug that basically, uh, the first time A, B, C matches, it would still uh, not reset the counter for this B in our group, and then just tries to continue matching uh, N plus one Bs next time, which didn't work. Um, also, you have the problems with infinity loops. So for example, the expression down there, basically you could say, well, it's just trying to match as many times an empty string, which is basically infinity match. Um, but yeah, the, the all the engines just match the A um, directly, so you need to have some loop protection, which you can do pretty easily by just saying, well, if you came and come here once more in this kind of loop or this repetition and there was no process, you say, okay, then I'll just do the other way and don't go into the loop anymore. Okay, so now we have, we have like, the, you can pass in a regular expression and then you basically can build a pass tree, yeah, we have to match her. But what you want to do is expose some object that looks like the built-in regular expression to the user that can play with it. So it's about building the regex.js object that you've seen before. Um, so it has just these two functions, execute and test. You could also think about string prototype, um, match, etc. But I said that's out of scope of this project, so I just concentrate on these two functions. Um, that's repetition, what we already did. Um, <coughs> and maybe it's, you know, the first attempt would be that it's, I mean, that, that looks pretty simple to do, right? Just, um, if you have something like execute, you just take um, the regular expressions thing, um, you parse it, you build a node list, and then you just throw it at the matcher and see what comes back. Um, but it turns out that's not 100% the right thing to do, um, because down there, as you see, um, the first regular expression works fine, but, but the last one doesn't. And the reason is um, the ABC can match at an arbitrary position, so it doesn't have to match at the first one. But the first implementation just didn't you know, looked at anything with a certain offset from the beginning. So how could that be fixed? So the easy fix is to do uh, some kind of fake loop. And so if we have ABC, you just could convert that regular expression to basically say, well, try to match as, uh, as less possible um, any characters and then the ABC following. And also do grouping around such that you record where you actually did the match. Um, Turns out that works. Um, so works. The problem is you end up with a lot of recursion in this case because every time you do this kind of match something at the beginning, this means another function call the way the match is interpreted. And for long strings, you really um, uh, hit the V8 maximum function call stack size. So the uh, implementation that I did later was really just um, don't start at the first position, or start at the first position if this doesn't work, move to the next position, um, plus one, and then do it. Um, other things that for regular expressions are flags. Um, so there's the multi-line flag that you pan, can pass to, and that only affects the, the, the assertions for the beginning and the end of regular expressions, and they are pretty simple to get right, that if you have a new line before or after, it should also match. There's a global match, which basically, um, means you should repeat an X time for another precision. That's also cache to implement. The, the more harder part is ignore case. Um, so in trivial implementation, my idea might be that you just take um, the input strings and your regular expression and just do uppercase and then see um, where the character matches. But actually the spec specifies it's not just a two upper string conversation, there are also some other small things that you got to watch out to. For example, if you do an upper string on the character or on the individual character, if it ends up to be two characters afterwards, you just use the, the previous one um, before doing the upper space. So you need to um, apply a different kind of function. And also you have fun with, um, with ranges because if you have a range A to curly brace and you do this ignore um, case operation where you basically transform it to uppercase, um, you only want the A to set good to go uppercase and the other um, characters to stay the same. So this is, um, yeah. 
and well, they're basically more fun to this. So um, the specs is that for all the input stuff, you need to call what um, internal defined two string into number functions. So um, here we have an example where we define a string as an object with a two string function, which returns false. And we try to execute it against ls with an ignore um, case um, regex. So does anybody know what this returns? Yeah, match is good. Um, so it returns ls, um, basically because it says the string, you call the toString function, which then returns false, which is boolean, where you call the toString function again. So you get false as a string, and then you match again against the ls, um, and then you, you end up with the ls. So that's uh, the small things to get right. Um, there is the, what? I got nine minutes. Yeah, um, so, <laughs> but there's, there's luckily um, a good test here from ECMAScript um, where, where we try to get all 500 and more tests passing and then you get all the small pitfalls. Um, so yeah, there, this XJS object got a little bit bigger, it's 240 lines of code. Um, so it was not as trivial, but it got working. So now we come to, to my favorite part, the, the chit compiler. Um, so I love compilers and I love chits. So, um, so an overview of what, what we want to do is basically we take a regular expression and we really want to emit JavaScript code itself. Um, so this means we re implement a regular expression chit in a JavaScript chit, which just by that self is like, uh. um, The idea is that we can match the input stream faster um, or the input string faster by using finite state machines. Um, we all also support just a subset of the regular expression um, to make our life easier, but hopefully that gives us faster and more efficient matches. Um, so for example, um, I said, well, I support all features, but I don't support group matches because it's a little bit hard to get right in the DFA, um, no back reference and only 3D repetitions. Um, and there's also a lot of stuff missing because I just did the entire chat implementation in, in three evening hacks, so it's still under construction. And there was this one thing where I really want to get things right, um, done pretty fast, so I just wrote this one line without any new returns in there. Turns out you get really fast with that, and that um, also reminds me of Code Mirror in Mayan, how he writes code, and there's some good thing to it I got, man I got noticed. So let's, let's see how this, this shit works. So internally, we create an NFA and DFA, um, who knows about what that stands for and what that is? Okay, only a few people, so I'll try to go slow. So if we have a regular expression A and B, um, in an NFA, I, I explain what it's later, but it's more confusing if I tell you. So um, that looks like this. So you have a beginning state with the zero, you have a transition A, which means if there's a character A matching in this state, you go to one. If there's a B matching, you go to two. And whatever there is, which is uh, signaled for light by this epsilon, you could just go to end state. And the end states are with these colleagues. So if you have something more complicated, A, B, or B, um, it looks like this. You can go from the first one, you can go to first, uh, from, from the zero state, you go to first or the third, and then either there's a B or you go to f for the fourth one. The problem with this NFA thing is you have non-deterministic, de non um, because for the first one, you don't know where you should go to, to state one or two or three. So in the DFA, you solve this and basically you say, okay, the, it's a little bit more complicated, but um, basically you group the transitions that are the same. And in this case, you come up with that, you can do a transition by A and then you're in the final state or if there's a B, you go and also go to another state where's the final state. Um, so the implementation basically does this, it converts the regex object to a non-deterministic final automata, which is what NFA stands for. Use that to turn it into deterministic final automata, and then there's a code generator which re emits JavaScript code. So this is the JavaScript code that it emits for A or B. So um, it's like an outer loop, and then we have this, this state zero, state one, and state two, and there are these transitions in there. Um, and if the character first time is A, it does transition to state one. If it's a B, it goes to the second one. Um, and the alphabet for this one is 
um, A, B. So the alphabet means what characters are used in this to describe the decisions. Um, <coughs> and I was wondering whether it, um, this could be a little bit optimized. Um, for example, if you think about um, really huge character ranges, you would have to add all the transitions for character A to Unicode 777. So maybe there is a better solution. And I just, because I'm running out of time, go real briefly, what I did was introducing alphabet classes. So the basic idea is like this. If, if we have something like C, uh, we have an rec expression with zero and then one to nine, it looks like, okay, we have one transition from zero to one state and then from the one to nine state, at from the one to two state, we have eight transitions for our characters one to nine. So our alphabet goes from zero to one to nine. Um, but this looks pretty similar to uh, the transition that we had before with zero, uh, zero, then we have an A, we go to one, and then from there we can do B into this to the second one. So we just basically say, okay, our A is zero, and B is everything from one to nine. And then we basically can make that a little bit, yeah, the alphabet easier again. Um, in, a, in a more complicated setup, basically if you have more complicated ranges, you think about a number line, you basically you, you think out what are the intersections and then you come up with your alphabet again. Um, so this is what basically apply to regular expression this looks like. Um, up there you have many transitions for A to E and C to Z, and down there you only have two transitions per each branch. So it makes it a little bit easier. So now the question is, if you write shit code, that's good, but how good is it actually in JavaScript engine? So I talked to Tom Schuster, who's on the SpiderMonkey team for Firefox about this, and he basically, um, put this in a while loop and hit it against Iron Monkey and see how good it is. And yeah, so this is like the internal representation and what he said, well, this is a little bit branchy, it's not good. So we, um, yeah, maybe we're meeting up in Brussels and work on this and hopefully we get something that's not that branchy and that's actually really tight loops and then get better performance. But as I said, it's, it's really under construction. So closing up now, um, what, are, what is there to do? Um, so there needs some code cleanup um, to be done. The shit is still under construction. Um, and also I uh, want to have like the same parser and traversal API like in a Spreamer that people can um, deal with record expressions easily. Um, <coughs> so status of project, the matcher works against all tests. So there's around 780 tests, uh, most of them from the ECMA official test suite. Um, but I could need some help. For example, project page is basically just what you saw before with this Tracer and you have our so that would be awesome if someone could have out there. Bug fixes and also um, testers, if you, if you figure out there's a rec app not working, just tell me, I'll try to fix it. Um, so, but what's maybe more important for the project is to come up with some cool ideas what you could use this for. Um, basically, I would like to see that like as primers for analyzing JavaScript code, that this could be um, some kind of foundation for analyzing irregular expressions. And for example, uh, implementing a rec app slinter where you say, well, you're not allowed to do arbitrary many matches or something. And also um, that you could use this in your, maybe let's say development environment to record how often are, regular, are your regular expression executed and um, then maybe debug that you should optimize some regular expressions um, or do something else to, to increase your performance. So with that, that's it. Thank you for listening. And I'm um, up for questions. <laughs> <laughs>